Okay, looks good. Okay, so um, what I thought I'd do would be to uh, give you a chance to ask questions, but I, I thought I would also, uh, you know, do some review for the test and, and, uh, and work on some things. So does that sound like that might be helpful? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's, uh, let's pop this up. <clears throat> and so I'll probably just work through uh, some previous finals. Let's see, we'll go back to, let's do, F, do a fall 17, see what that looks like. <clears throat> let's see, this looks good. So I'll maybe work through this whole thing. And then I'm still trying to figure out how to make this work uh, in the format. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this one. So I'm gonna, uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll, we'll do this. All right, so. <clears throat> and maybe I'll print it out and uh, that'll let me, let, let me print it out real quick too. Uh, Dr. Can Morgan, you can you hear me? Sure. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Give me a second. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Uh, Professor, can you share this one so we can also print it and put our notes uh, on it? Yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, okay, I'll do that. Um, let's see. You mean you want me to put it on Blackboard or something? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, it's maybe on... Horny? May already be on there, but let me. Um, okay, so let me pull up Blackboard. Okay, so hang on one second. Let me just let me cancel this then. Uh, switch to this, and then let me uh, pull up this and Blackboard. And all gone. So it'll take me a minute to get it on here, but. Uh, Okay, and then let me go to Logic Design. And then we'll add a file. Uh, sorry, build content a file. And then it's gonna be a, <clears throat> and that is a, so what is it? Is it F? I can't remember. It was F17. Okay. And then uh, let's find it. And so 25, 13. F17. Okay, so it's now on Blackboard. I think it should be at the very bottom of the of the content page. <clears throat> okay, now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. And then uh, I printed it out so I can work on it. So let me bring up the the um, the and then I'm working on the thing. There it is. The data visualizer. Okay, perfect. So then, yeah, so then we'll do that and we'll make this a little bigger. And then we'll make this a little bigger too. Uh, let's see, see if that's, okay. And then let's turn on the light. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, perfect. So then we'll slide this up a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, that should be good. All right, and then I'll put on my glasses so I can see it. Okay, so let me then bring this back up and let me share my screen. And there. Okay, so 
so here's the uh, so here's the test. You guys can see that, I guess. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, and uh, so um, so uh, this will be pretty similar to the content. So I will have one SOP to POS and probably one POS to SOP, or this is POS to SOP and this is SOP to POS, and then. We'll, we'll do one truth table uh, with three don't cares and a K map. And I'll either ask for the POS or the SOP. I'll give you a little K map to do. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of what I've traditionally done, but I'm going to have to modify this to do the online thing. So I'm <clears throat> still figuring out how that'll look. Hopefully, this weekend I'll have that done. And Monday, I can review that with you. So you'll kind of know exactly what to expect. But <clears throat> but I'll, but if you understand how to do this, you'll be in good shape, okay? And then uh, I'll give you uh, one um, example of a process block here. Uh, and so this is, this is basically an entire little uh, module <clears throat> in, very, in uh, VHDL. And uh, it includes a process block, which is the way we do sequential logic in our hardware description language and VHDL anyway, we use always blocks and uh, Verilog, but it's the same idea. And within this process block, there is what's called the sensitivity list. That sensitivity list has a clock, a set knot, and a clear. And down here, then we have, uh, <clears throat> the first thing we have is, is the, uh, uh, we check to see if the clear is one. If the clear is one, which because the clear is not a clear knot, it's a, just a clear, that's, that, that means that, and you see that it's a clear equals one here. So then, uh, then you would set uh, temp equal to zero. Uh, temp's, a, temp's a local variable in this situation. Um, and you can look here and you can see the, the, uh, the entity tells you the port list. So the, the ports that appear to the outside world are D, clock, clear, set not, those are inputs, and the outputs are Q and Q prime. So you can kind of see this is a D flip flop with an active low set, an active high clear, and we don't know about the clock yet, uh, but we'll see that in a minute. So the clear is one, so that's active high, you set temp to zero, and then down here, uh, we sent temp to Q, and Q prime is not temp. And these are, these are not in the process block, these are just assignments, and this happens uh, continually. So whenever temp changes, these will be updated. Uh, but temp will um, change. Question. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask, uh, could you even give the very log or like, would it definitely be VHDL? No, I'll, I'll, I'll probably give it in VHDL because that's what's in the book. But the very log of this would be very similar. Instead of, in, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, the, instead of having entity and architecture, we just have a module mm -hmm. declaration. And then the port list would be in, in, the, in the beginning of the module declaration. And then yeah, so <clears throat> down here, be like what's the that? Class. <clears throat> we won't use the IEEE class in there, right? Or the IEEE library? Yeah, we, yeah, we wouldn't, these are just boilerplate things. I, you don't really need to worry about that stuff. Okay. Yeah, you're not gonna have to write this. You're just gonna have to answer some questions about it. Okay, that's fine. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> if there's, a, <clears throat> if this were very log, uh, instead of the word process, it would be always. And, uh, but anyway, uh, but otherwise it'd be very similar. And, and then the, the other difference is the if statements are a little different than very log. They're more like C if statements. But anyway, so within this, we have if clear equals one, set temp to zero. Else if set not is zero, then set temp to one. So that's the active low set. And then else if, if neither one of these are true, so that would mean clear is low and set not as high, then the else if clock tick event, remember that clock tick event is this idiom that means the clock just occurred, uh, just changed, and clock equals zero. Okay, so now we know it's a falling edge clock, right? Because it, the clock just changed and now it's zero, so it must have gone from one to zero. Then temp equals D. So that's how the flip-flop would normally work with the clock. And the two asynchronous inputs are up here, the active high clear and the active low set. And then if none of those are active, then the clock takes over 
And if the clock is a falling edge, uh, then temp, then D is assigned to temp. And of course, whenever temp changes, these will be updated immediately. So Q will be temp and Q prime will be not temp. And that's the end. So basically it's a falling edge, it's a falling edge clock with an active high clear and an active low set. And so now look at this VHDL code. So what kind of flip-flop does it show? It shows a D flip-flop. How many bits can it remember? Well, one flip-flop can remember one bit. It could be zero or one. What do we call clock, clear, and set not in the first line? We call that the sensitivity list. And that's right here. Is the clock a rising or falling edge? Well, since it's clock tick event and clock equals zero, it's a falling edge. If it were clock tick event and clock equals one, then it's, uh, then it's a rising edge. And this clock tick event thing, that's just how VHDL does it. Uh, in Verilog, it's a little more reasonable. Uh, all, the, all the signals in the sensitivity list are, have to be edge signals, and, they're, and clock is called pause edge or negative edge. So if it says, you know, neg edge clock, pause edge set not, neg edge clear, then, or pause edge clear, neg edge set not, neg edge clock, then you know clock's negative edge. You can just read it directly. But here you have to look and see what clock tick event and clock equals, okay? And um, then label the three blanks. Okay, so uh, one of these would be a uh, would be a set uh, would be the set not. One would be the clear, and this would be the D input. Add bubbles and needed. Well, it's a falling edge clock, so you need a bubble on the on the clock line, and need a bubble on the set not because it's a it's an active low set. And then if clear not equals zero and set not equals zero, Q equals what? Well, the set not if you look at this, the first thing that's checked is the clear, but it's an active high clear, so that would be inactive. Then it checks the set. The set is an active low, so it would set it. So Q would equal one, and it would not depend on the clock. And that's that's this problem. Okay, and then we'll come back. Uh, I don't. We we may give you uh, one or two of these, uh, something like this. So it. Calculating an 8-bit twos complement, doing a doing a multiplication, doing a subtraction, and then uh, and then we'll have uh, where you uh, I don't know I probably won't do this problem, but uh, this is where you can see the consensus term. And the only thing tricky about this one is the consensus term is this whole row. It's not this little group of two. It's the group of four here. Uh, so you can solve the problem with a group of four here and a group of four here. Uh, but the consensus term is this whole row that would be CD, the whole row CD. So this group of four would obviously be A, D. This group of four would be A prime C. And the consensus term would be CD. Um, and the, the transition would be where you move from this group of this, either one of these blocks to, to this group over here. And basically, you fix that by putting in this consensus term CD. Um, So it says you would likely need to add this consensus term for the downstream logic was very slow. Well, no. Remember we we talked about you know hazards. Uh, they're only really uh, they only a, a concern if your downstream logic is very quick and it's going to pick up this this small glitch. If it's real slow, then the small glitch is probably not going to have any effect. And then uh, write the consensus term. Well, that's CD. All right. Uh, so now, now we get into uh, these sequential problems. I'm going to come back and do these one by one. But uh, so the first one uh, we worked the other day, and uh, so uh, I probably do this last. But we already did work through this on on the help session the other day. Um, then uh, here is a standard non sequential counter, and we also worked this one the other day. But I'll do this one again. And it's it it counts seven three one zero five and back to seven, and so we'll show how, I'll show you how to do this one. Here is the uh, here is a an SM chart problem. Now we've covered SM charts, so I'll go through this with you. Uh, I may do this one first, and then uh, I've also worked this problem, but we'll come back and we'll do that again. Um, I think I worked out on uh, on Wednesday as well or on whenever the last help session was. Okay, and then we have a, uh, then we have a little mealy one here. We'll talk about this one. 
Um, so this one says, design a Mealy sequential circuit having one input and one output that will produce an output of one whenever four zeros in a row, uh, whenever uh, four zeros in, are input in a row. Otherwise, the output is zero. And it resets as soon as a one is received, but overlapping targets are allowed. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so in other words, if you had uh, five zeros in a row, that would be two targets. Okay. So uh, here's our sample input, and we'll go through this in, in just a minute. And here's, here's the little state graph, and we'll work through the state graph. Here's one where I give you the state graph, and I want you to, um, I want you to fill out the state table. So all you have to do is extract the information. In this particular one, we have two inputs, x, x2 and x1. Um, and uh, so that means we have four columns here in the next state thing because there's four possibilities. 0, 0 for x2 and 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And so we have four possibilities. And so you can read them right off this chart. And the output, because this is a more, the outputs are associated with the nodes. So uh, in S0, the output is one, in S1, the output is one, in S2, the output is zero, and in S3, the output is one. All right, and then here's one where I give you the state table and I want you to do the K-maps and uh, solve the problem. And so we'll, we'll, we'll look at this. And then finally, this is, uh, this is, this is another uh, one of those things where uh, I, show, I show you how to, you know, you have to do a timing diagram and in this case, we have an active low clear or a clear knot, and we have a falling edge clock, and it is a JK. So we'll go through how to do that. If you remember uh, the guidance I gave you for that, there it makes it very straightforward if you if you do it in the way that I basically laid out. All right, okay. So let's uh, go back and do some of these. And for that, I think I'll bring this up. So let's do. Um, well, maybe maybe just for grins, we'll do a little. We'll do a quick review. We'll do this problem first. Uh, okay, so so the first thing to do is to extract the information from the from the truth table into the K map. And to do that, I really do like to number the rows. So the first row has is zero, and it's really important to get that right. Zero, one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right, so it's gonna be one, one, don't care, zero. I'm, I'll just leave that blank instead of putting the zero there. One, one, zero, 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 one, one, don't care, zero, one, don't care. Okay, and let's count the ones to make sure we got this right. We know there are three don't care, so that's good. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it looks like it's probably correct. And then over here, I'll put the zeros and the don't cares. So zero, don't care. Zero, zero. Zero, don't care. And don't care. And zero, zero. Now, if you look at this one, it's pretty obvious. This is easy. Got a group there and a group here. This one would be a one. These would be zeros. Uh, if you do this one, it's also pretty obvious. You have a group of four here and you have a group of four here. So it looks like just on first glance that we're gonna have uh, one, two, two variable terms in the SOP form and one, two, two variable terms in the POS form. So I already know that, that, that these are gonna be equivalent. So that POS and the SOP solutions are gonna be exactly uh, uh, the same cost. Uh, obviously they'll be different forms, but they'll have the same number of gates, same number of inputs. So there's no real advantage in, in one over the other in this particular case. And I already know no matter which solution I do, these X's are gonna be picked as zeros and this X is gonna be picked as a one. So 15 is a one and these others are zeros. So I can go ahead and fill that in. All right, so plot the K-map, write the min POS expression. Okay, so the min POS expression is gonna come out over here and, and, and it's labeled A, B, C, D, like we always label it. So th 
the way I do these, I write it as though it were a min term and then I flip it. So this would be a c prime. So we flip it and it's a prime plus c. And this would be a prime uh, c and we flip it and it's a uh, plus c prime. So that's the solution. So the POS solution, but if we want to do this one, this one is going to be uh, a prime c prime, and this one is going to be a c. So the SOP solution would be a prime c prime plus a c, but the POS solution, which is what we asked for, is uh, a prime plus c times a plus c prime. So that's this problem. Okay, well, I just wanted to run through that one. Any anybody have questions about that? everybody good okay so moving on uh, so let's let's go do um, so let's go do uh, let's see we we're gonna do I think we we're gonna do this one first let's see if we can fit it it's kind of hard to fit all that on here let me lift this up a little bit see if I can shrink it down just a little okay so let's read the, let's read the uh, the verbiage here Maybe to do that, I'll go back and uh, I'll go back to the. Uh, uh, I'll go back to the. Uh, the document. Okay, and so here we are here, and I'll shrink it just a little bit. All right, you're to, you're to, you're to finish a state machine chart for a problem with an input x and an output z. Where z equals x, except that it must prevent four zeros in a row. Okay, so if the input is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, the output z should be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 instead of 0, and then 1, 0, 1, where the 1 that is underlined would have been a 0, but it was changed to prevent four zeros in a row. The net resets after the target. Use Mealy Machine. Do straight binary flip-flop state assignment for each block and fill in the A and B as shown by dashed lines. Finish the SM chart connections, then write DA, DB, and Z equations below. Z equals zero if there is no conditional assignment block with Z1. Okay, so remember, we only specify where Z equals one. We don't specify where Z equals zero. And so that's actually, um, yeah. All right, so the first thing we do, uh, it says drew straight binary flip-flop assignment. Okay, so this means S0 would be AB is zero, zero. S1 is AB is 0, 1, S2 is AB is 1, 0, and S3 is AB is 1, 1. All right, and then we need to finish the connections. Okay, so again, what we have to remember, we start in S0, we, we're, we don't know, we don't have any zeros, okay? When our first zero comes in, now we have the first zero. And that's what we're remembering in S1. When the next zero comes in, we're remembering two zeros. If we don't get a zero, we go back to nothing. If we get a one, we'd go back to nothing, okay? If, then if we get a third zero, now we go to S3, we remember three zeros. Now if we get a fourth zero, we're gonna stay in S3 and we're gonna output a one instead of a zero. Otherwise, we're always gonna output what we get in. Okay, so let's uh, switch to the uh, paper and we'll, we'll do this. Okay, so the first thing, We'll just fill in the, uh, we'll fill in uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Straight binary assignment, okay? Yeah. I don't know. It looks like it's slightly out of focus for some reason. Uh, but anyway. Okay, I don't know what it's doing there. Uh, maybe it's, let's see if it does better like that. Yeah, I think it does a little better like that. All right, well anyway, okay. So, so we start here. So if we get, so the first thing we do, that's our state box. It says, uh, it, there's no uh, outputs associated with it because this is a melee, not a more. It says we have nothing. If we get an X, then, uh, then, uh, if we get if our x is zero, we're going to go out here and into S1. 
if we get a one, our z, we're not good, we don't need this because z is gonna stay one. We're just gonna go out and we'll go back in here because we still have nothing. Here, if we get a zero, then we're gonna go to S2 and remember that we have two zeros now. But if we get a one, um, oh, sorry, we do need this, my bad. We need, we need this because, uh, I should put this back in, because z, our z is equal to our input. So our input is one, so z is gonna be one. Here is z is also one. We don't have to write it equal to one, we just put z there and that means it's one. And, uh, and then we go back up here to S0. All right, in S2, uh, if we get a one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go out and we're gonna go all the way back to S0 again. But if we get a zero, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go into S3 and our output will be, our output Z will be zero. So we don't, we don't specify that. I mean, if you wanted to put a conditional block here and write Z equals zero, you could, but it's assumed if you don't, if you don't write it. So you might as well not write it. And, uh, and then finally down here, we have, uh, if we get a zero, now here's where it's tricky. In either case, we're gonna go to Z equals one. If we get a zero though, we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back in to S3 because now we still have three zeros. And if we get another zero, we're just gonna stay in that loop. Um, because we, we're allowed to do overlapping targets. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Net resets after the target. Okay, so never mind. So, uh, so, so it, it doesn't, that's wrong. It, so it goes back. So regardless, here, we're gonna output a Z and we're gonna go back here and go back into S0. Now, so you, when you see this, the first thing you realize, well, you don't even need to test X because it doesn't really matter. So actually we could, we could skip all this stuff here and we could just go immediately go, we could just immediately go Z and then go back to S zero. Either way, we're gonna output a one regardless because if, if the input is a one, then Z would be one anyway. And if the output's a zero, we're gonna change the output to be one because it's the fourth zero. And so we can't have overlapping targets, uh, we do reset. Okay, so that's, so now we've drawn that. Now, how do, we, how do we evaluate the DA and DB inputs? Well, so we want for DA, we want, we want all the paths into any block where the A value is one. Here the A value is zero, so we don't have to worry about that one. Here the A value is zero, so we don't have to worry about that one. But here it's one, so we want all the paths into S2. And then here it's one also, we want all the paths into S3. Well, it turns out there's only one path into S2 and it comes from S1. So since S1 is coded 0, 1, S1 is defined as A prime B and it's when X is zero. So that means this path is A prime B X prime. So we take A prime B X prime plus the path into here, which is A B prime X prime A b prime x prime and we can't really combine anything here so you, you could factor the x prime out and and put x prime anded with a uh, um yeah you could factor the x out but I, why would you want to do that anyway so um so if you want you could do x prime times a prime b plus b uh plus a b prime all right, but that doesn't really do much for you. All right, and then the B input everywhere, the B is a one. Well, B is a one here. It's zero there and it's one here. So we want all the paths into S1 and all the paths into S3. So the path into S1 comes from S0, which is A prime, B prime, X prime. And the path into, uh, the path into uh, S3 is the same as up here, a, B prime, X prime. And here we can drop the A and that just gives us B prime, X prime. Because here it's A prime and there it's A, so we can drop that one and combine those terms. And then Z, so Z, we have to put all, we have to put all the places where Z is one. Where Z is one 
z is one here, where we have a prime b prime x plus it's here a prime b x plus it's here uh, a b x and then here it's always one no matter what so that's just a b well this is very convenient so uh what did i say let's see it's uh a b prime i left out the prime there uh, so so the nice thing here we can uh we can take a prime b prime x and a prime bx and we can combine them into just bx i'm sorry uh, a prime x and then uh, we can take a prime bx or sorry we can take a prime b prime x and a b prime x and combine that into b prime x so uh, dr morton yeah uh, why do we for d sub b? Why do we start? Why do we stop at a b prime x prime? Uh, so we have to we have to take every path into any block where the b value is one. So where which which blocks have a b value of one? Um, a prime b. Right. Well, so so s one, right? Yeah. The b is one here. Is the B1 there? No. no. Is the B1 there? No. The B is one here. So we have to take all paths into S1. There's only one path in. All paths into S3. There's only one path in. Right? Yeah. So that means there's two terms. This term is going to be A prime, B prime, X prime, because that's the path we have to go. And the path here is going to be a b prime x prime so a prime b prime x prime and a b prime x prime and that we can combine these terms and get b prime x prime oh wait okay so so we do not write um a prime b and x prime yeah uh no no because that would be a prime b x prime yeah we did uh no, no, we don't write that because the path from here into here, B is a zero. Okay, I see. So, so we're not we're not writing even even though S one is one of the places where a, the B term is one, but but we want the paths into this. Okay, and the path into this is a prime B prime X prime. We don't we don't necessarily have to use a B. Uh, a prime B for anything, because if this path came out and went back in here, then we would, but it doesn't. So okay, thank you. you just want the paths going in. So it turns out from S1, there is no path going into it, going into a block where the B is one, even though in S1, the B is one, but that doesn't mean you use that. You only use that if there's a path from this block going into a block where B is one, and there isn't. Okay. There's a path that goes into here, and there's a path that goes back to here. Both here, B is a zero, and here, B is a zero. So in no case would we, would we write A prime B something, X something, because none of those paths go into, an, into a block where the B term is one in the flip-flop encoding. Does that make sense? Closer. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, for Z, can you clarify why it's one every time we go through the path in this yeah. case? Okay, so if we go back to the instruction, um, where Z equals X, except it must prevent four zeros in a row. So, so Z always equals X. So, so when X is zero, Z is zero. When, when X is one, Z is one. So we only have to write where Z is one. So that would be, uh, that would be A prime B prime X, A prime B X, A B prime X. And in this case, both these paths give us a Z of one because if, if, it, if X is zero, that's the fourth zero. So we switch it to one. 
And otherwise, if, if x is one, then z just equals x, so z is one. So in this case, we didn't even need the decision box. We didn't need these. We just needed one conditional output where z is one. Okay, yeah, I got you. Thank so you. that's just a, b. No choice, no, doesn't depend on x. But if you wanted to write it, it would be a, b, x plus a, b, x prime, which combines to a, b. So that term is a, b. Make sense? So yeah. then our, our final term then is a prime x plus b prime x plus a, b. Okay, um, so that's so. Hopefully, you can see that uh, that's that's really pretty easy, right? That's so much easier than doing than going through all the hassle of uh, you know transition table, uh, K maps, and all that. So it's it's really nice. It makes it makes life really easy for you to use the SM chart. Okay, does that make sense? Now, the one difference between doing it this way and then doing a state table, transition table, K-maps, is that we don't get to take advantage of any don't cares. Now, in this case, there weren't any don't cares anyway, so it doesn't matter. But if there are a lot of don't cares, then you might want to do it the other way because then you can take advantage of the don't cares. But for a lot of problems, that doesn't matter. But, uh, but that is one issue. Okay. Now let's go, let's do this, uh, let's see, uh, let's do this problem. And then, uh, uh, so, so this one's, this one's a little, little trickier. Let's, uh, let's, let's bring the word file back up. So let's read the problem. So design a mealy sequential circuit, having one input and one output that will produce an output of one whenever four zeros are input in a row and zero otherwise. It resets as soon as a one is received, but overlapping targets are allowed. Okay, so we're not, so, so it does reset as soon as we get a one, but you can, but you can have overlapping targets. Okay, so let's read it again. Design a mealy sequential circuit having one input and one output that will, reduce, that will produce an output of one whenever four zeros are input in a row. Okay, so it's, it's basically, it's very similar to the one we just did, except that in this case, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little confused how we can have overlapping targets, but resets. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a little groovy. Oh, okay. So, so we could, so yeah, so it is a little different uh, because uh, it only resets on a one. So as long as we keep getting zeros, we can, we can, we'll keep out, we'll keep flipping them to a one, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So anyway, uh, so here's our example sequence. So one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. There's our fourth zero. We change it to one. Now we have an overlapping target of a zero. So we flip it to one, another zero, we flip it to one. Now we get a one, we reset back to zero. And then we stay here. And then finally we get four more ones. Uh, four more zeros and there's a one, but then we get a one, so we reset. Okay, so it's a little different because uh, in this case, we didn't do that. And I didn't do a test sequence here, but in this case, uh, we, we reset regardless after we, after we get a target. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's think our way through the state graph because this one's a little bit trickier. Um, okay, so let me, let's do that. Okay, so. So, okay, so, so we start in S0, and we, um, and, and the other, uh, and this is a melee, okay, so, uh, so was the other one. So, so we'll start in S0, and we'll assume we have, we'll have, we have nothing, okay. Um, now, if we get a, if we get a zero, then uh, we have to remember that we have um, that we have the first zero in a possible out, uh, sequence of zero. Oh, and one other difference is um, 
uh, it only produces an output of one when there are four zeros in a row, whereas the other one, uh, we output the input except in that case. So, so here, our output is zero, and if we get a one, it's zero. If we get a zero, it's zero. So if we get a zero, then um, uh, if we get a zero, we're going to ask one. We'll remember that we have one zero. If we get another zero, we're going to ask two, and we'll also output a zero because we don't have a. And then finally, if we get another zero, we'll go to S3. And we'll output a zero there too. So here we have one zero, here we have two zeros, and here we have three zeros. Now in S3, if we get one more zero in, then, uh, then we would stay in S3, but we would output a one. Okay, so we get a zero in, but we output a one. And that's the only place we output a one. Everywhere else, we're gonna output zeros. Uh, now, if in S1, if we get a one, we're gonna reset, okay? So we're gonna go back to here on a one, and we're gonna output a zero. In S2, if we get a one, we're gonna reset from there too. So on a one, we'll reset, and we'll output a zero. And, uh, from S3, if we get a one, we'll also reset and we'll output a zero. So now we have two paths out of every node. So we, we, we're done, okay? Now, uh, let's, fill in this, let's fill in the state table. Okay, so from S0, uh, uh, oh, let's see, the one thing I didn't do it is I didn't put in S0, what do we do if we get a one? If we get a one, we're just gonna stay there and we're gonna output a zero. Okay, so from S0, if we get a zero, we're going to S1. And if we get a one, we're staying in S0. If we get a zero, we're outputting a zero, and we're outputting a zero if we get a one. In S1, we have one zero remembered. And then uh, if we get a zero, we're going to S2. If we get a one, we're going back to S0. And in both cases, we're outputting zeros. And we're remembering a zero. In S2, we're, now we have two zeros, so that's what we're remembering. If we get a zero, we're going to S3. If we get a one, we're going back to S0. And we still output zeros. And in S3, if we get a one, or sorry, if we get a zero, we're staying here. But if we get a one, we're going back to S0. And in this case, we are outputting a one, but otherwise we output a zero. And here we remember that we have three zeros. That's our state table. And then from here, it's easy to do the K maps. Uh, so how many flip-flops would be required? Well, we have four states, so it's two flip-flops, A and B. And then if we did K maps, our K maps would be A, B would be X, A, and B. And we would do one for D, A, D, B, and Z, the output. And the K maps would be all we have to do is, if we did straight binary, then we'd substitute in 0, 0 for S0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. If we did some other assignment, then these would be different. Um, and then we just substitute for S1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then we'd extract that into uh, the A columns, we'd extract into the A, and the B columns, we'd extract into the DB, and the these columns, we'd extract. So the Z, the Z map would be really simple. We'll do that right here because we've got that already. Uh, it's a two variable map with uh, X on top and AB down the side. And so it would just be zero, zero, flip these, uh, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So basically that would just be X prime AB. So Z equals X prime AB. And the others would be fairly simple too. You just have to extract those columns, but I didn't ask you to do that. All right, any questions about that one? Are we good? Yes, no? So far so good. All right, and then this one, let me just do a little bit here. It's really pretty simple. So you see, I already gave it to you S0, what that would be. So let's look at S1. So S1, 
On 0, 0, and 1, 1, we're going to S3. So we put S3 here and S3 here. On, one, on 0, 1, we're going back to S0. And on 1, 0, we're staying there at S1. And the output is 1. And we do that for S2. On S2, uh, 0, 0, and 1, 1, we're going to S3. Now we don't even know what this thing does. On a 1, we're staying here. And on a 1, 0, we're going back to S, S0. And we output a 0. And then in S3, we're here, we output a 1. And on 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, we're staying there. And on a zero, we're going back to S0. Pretty straightforward. Now, we don't know what this does. Have no idea. That's OK. We don't have to know. We can, we can once we have the state table, I'm sorry, the state graph, we can generate the state table by just copying the information. And once we have this, we can do the rest of the problem. In this case, we would have uh, A, B, X2, and X1 as our variables. And we normally put we normally put x2, x1 on top and ab down the side because it would line up uh, better with, uh, with how these are laid out here. And we'd have to remember to switch the, the two columns and we'd have to remember to switch the two rows like we always do when we copy the information. And uh, when we put in the coding, we would have A and B in each column, A and B each, in, in each column, A and B. But this 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 don't stand for A and B. They stand for X1, X2. So you have to keep that straight. OK, let's do the, uh, let's do, uh, let's do this. Um, well, let's, let's, we'll do one of these. OK, so here you're given, here you're given a state table. So first off, is this a mealy or a more? You should be able to tell immediately by looking at the, the Z the output. It's a more. That's right. It's a more. It's a more because there's only one column. We don't, it doesn't depend on X1 and X2. Otherwise, there'd be four columns here. And notice we just have a little two variable map here. So it's easy. 1, 1, 0, 0. So Z is just going to be A prime. OK, here, this is the A column. So we have to extract this, switching these columns. OK, so basically, the first column, we're going to go 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, flip the rows, 0. The next column, 1, 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 0. The next column, we have to, we have to go all the way over here. So that would be 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0. And the last column, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. And so, now we do this, this, and this. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be. Uh, so this is A B here. So it's going to be uh, A B prime plus these two, which will be uh, X one X two A plus X uh, X one prime X two. A prime, so x1, uh, sorry, x2 prime, no, sorry, x1 prime, x2, A prime. And the same thing for B. Does that make sense? OK, let's do this last one. And I'll probably quit because I've got a 12 o'clock with uh, the micro one folks who are struggling to get their code written. All right. So remember how I told you to do this. If you follow the, if you follow my guidelines, you'll be fine. If you don't follow them, you'll probably be in trouble. The first thing to do, you look and see what do you have. Okay, it's a JK flip flop falling edge, and it has an active low clear. So the active low clear, where is the clear active? Well, is it active here? No, because it's high there, so it's not active. So so we have to shade all this space here. This is where it's active and it's not active here. So the clock is going to take effect here. So here we want to label the falling edges because it's a falling edge clock, not the rising, but the falling. So we have an active falling edge there, an active falling edge there, and an active falling edge there. And we know that the, uh, 
that we know that we're going to have to, we've got a propagation delay of five nanoseconds after the active edge of the clock and, or the assertion of clear knot. So here's where clear knot is asserted. So it's going to take effect. Um, it's going to take effect uh, here, but Q is uh, Q starts off as zero. So this clear knot is going to hold Q down until the first active edge plus five nanoseconds. So nothing can change until here. Even though the active edge is here, nothing can change till there. Now, at each of these active edges, we need to write in the J and K values. So at this active edge, J is one and K is one. Here, J is one and K is zero. Here, J is one and K is one. All right, so when J is one and K is one, what happens to this signal? Toggle. Five, it toggles. Five toggle. nanoseconds later, it goes up. Now, what happens when J is one and K is zero? Remember, one. does it stay one? It stays one. That's right. And then here, they're both one again. What happens? Toggle again. That's right. I mean, toggle. Five nanoseconds later, it toggles. So that's what it looks like. Okay. So if you go through this process, mark the active area for the clear. In this case, it's active low, so it's active here, not active there. Mark all the active edges where the asynchronous input's not blocking the clock. Now notice, when the clear is deasserted here, it doesn't mean squat. Nothing happens associated with that edge. It only happens at the next active edge. Just because the clear goes away doesn't mean the flip-flop suddenly sets. It only sets when the active edge occurs. And only then if the conditions in J and K were, were, were such that it would make it set, which in this case, it, it made it toggle so it does go to set because it was low. But if, if J had been one and K had, if K had been one and J had been zero, it would have stayed clear. All right, so that pretty much does it. Um, so, uh, so that one's on the screen now. Uh, Dr. Morton? Yeah. Uh, since you're recording this, are you going to post it on Blackboard? And yeah. are you also going to post this uh, practice exam? The passive exam I already put on Blackboard just, oh, just okay. at the beginning. It's there. Uh, yeah, I will try and post the video. If it's not in the right format, it may be difficult to post. But um, yes, I will do that. Okay. And is there also uh, another video going to be posted today? Yes. For the quiz? I will post. I will post a video today. Uh, I may not do a quiz with it, but this video will have. Um, It'll be reviewing for the test. Okay, thank you. Yep, you bet. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording and sign.